Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to The Rundown, episode number 24, I believe. Why do I never remember the fucking numbers of this podcast, man? We should do this before we start recording. We really fucking should. That's, that, 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 I'm, I'm gonna keep it a bug. That one's on me. I apologize for that. You know, this is a nah, professional yeah. outlet. This I'm here profession- too. Uh, I should also be helping out. It's not just you. What number is it? 24. We, it is in fact 24. I was, I was correct. Uh- <laughs> I mean, I will say, ironically, every time you say, I think it's X number, you do tend to get it. That's good. I at least have something resembling a head on my shoulders. Uh, I think the big news for this week is kind of is talking about uh, Concord, just to get right into it. Yeah, uh, I saw, have you, ha, I saw have you heard something about, about it. Uh, I know this is what PlayStation's attempt at a hero shooter. It had really bad reception at the beta, which released a few months ago, and it just released. Re- uh, like less than a week or two weeks ago, right? Oh, I, I want to be clear that, like, the, uh, from what I hear, like, from the people in the beta, like, it wasn't bad. Like, it seemed like a very just tight very, shooter, uninspired, just very slow. And a lot of the ideas in it could be presented in better games that are free to play. This was also released as a forty dollar title, right? Versus what Valve has been doing with their new game, Deadlock, which I been playing quite a bit of on stream which is a MOBA hero shooter which leans more on the MOBA side than the hero shooter side if I'm being perfectly honest but it is quite good I've enjoyed my time with it um quite a bit it's uh it's been quite a thing but to bring it back to Concord like I I think the thing the reason why something like an Overwatch and I'm kind of like um kind of like uh, uh um uh Taking a little bit from a few different uh, folks, I, I, you know, whose analysis I'm just kind of extrapolating from um, a few different people. Uh, the big thing is, is that Concord is artistically not great. It's too realistic in a way. It, I think that you know, like they're like it, it, I think Bellier Gaming kind of said that if you put a black a, ba- a black backdrop over all of the characters like each character in overwatch most of them at least have unique silhouettes that you know allow you to pick them out of the group versus conquered which is just humanoid person humanoid person in a trench coat humanoid person slightly bigger humanoid person slightly smaller humanoid person feminine person man masculine person hyper masculine person big ass fucking room i think also it's 10 years too late when yeah. did the original Overwatch release? That yeah, was 2012, 2013, maybe even 2011? Uh, the original Overwatch released in 2016. Oh, 2016. But that's oh, yeah, yeah, still yeah, that almost was... a decade ago. Yeah, that, that's what I'm saying. Like, if it released 2016 to 2020 even, prior to Apex, it probably would have done good for what it was. But releasing at a $40 price tag, when every other main uh, behemoth in that genre of video game is doing it at such a lower price tag, it doesn't make any sense. Like, why invest... The other part of this is, and we talk about this with the games as a service games, but there's only so much fucking time in your day. What are you going to choose to do? Continue to play the games that you have a long-standing history and all the skins, paid DLC, if that's what you're into, if you like it enough. Or are you going to start a new one? With a premium dollar price tag attached to it. That's also expecting more of your time to be sacrificed. So, so I will say this, though. Like, I actually think that the $40 price tag is not as big of an issue as people give it credit for. I don't know if it has microtransactions or not. I'm saying it, for this genre, because even Valorant is, what, 15 to 20, if anything? I don't really know. I am not a Valorant player. <laughs> I think that I think it's it's free to play. Oh, it's free? I, I, mean, I mean, that's what I'm saying. You have Overwatch 2. Say what you want about it. I'm not saying it's better than the original Overwatch in a lot of ways. But free to play. So is Valorant. So is Apex. I know that's not really a hero shooter. That's more F- FPS. But, like, that's kind of the same vein. 
Yeah, it's like here's the thing: if they if 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 Concord was an extraction shooter, that would be more in line with the current like hop on the tr uh, on the uh, on the um, trend gaming thing today. You know what I mean? Like, um, you have a like it's 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 almost like they they like <sighs> TF two is more relevant today than, you know, I would say even Overwatch is at this point. Like, more people are obsessively, like, that aren't bots are playing TF2 now than Overwatch. Yeah, I believe it because it's Activision, right? Overwatch is Activision. Yeah, well, it's, Activision. Also on Steam. it's also on Steam now as well. Well, I'm saying Activision dropped the ball with a lot of things from Overwatch 1 to 2. When Overwatch 2 released, it was not a good received game. So there. I want to apologize to everybody listening to the recording where why there was about 10 seconds of just dead air. Uh, for some reason, a, randomly, my computer just decides, hey, all of the display ports are going to refresh, all of the USB ports are going to refresh, and everything's just going to be fucked. So, unfortunately... Fun. Uh, I don't know why it decides to do this, but it does. Fuck me, I guess. Um, I apologize for that inconvenience, ladies and gentlemen. Um, thankfully, you can hear me. We're going to continue the discussion. My hands, at least until I can fix this while we are recording, are going to be frozen on top of my head for the time being. Yeah, you're really captivated by what I'm saying. No, I'm just glad that we didn't lose the recording genuinely. Right, so good content, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it, and I also think to your point of it being unimaginative and not really artistically pleasing, uh, it's definitely true. It seems like they, it, I'm not saying it has AI assets in it, but it very look very much looks like. AI, hey, very generic, humanoid character in hero shooter, big, small woman, man, boom. So you know, it, it, it I, I, I don't even think it's so much. I don't think it was like so much AI generated. It's just like I think we. No, no, no I'm not saying it is. I'm just saying it's oh, like oh, yeah, AI yeah. generated esque. You know, yeah, it's like AI generated. Just like today, feel is like like treating AI generated as like a synonym for just like uninspired, basic, uninspired, basic, yeah. like not like you know, compelling art. Like, just, like, some shit on the level of, like, a Jeff Koons. Like, just terrible. Yeah. And, and that's what I also think a lot of current day video games are kind of missing outside of the indie double A space is the charm. Because uh, you gotta remember a lot of especially in the early 2000s 90s 80s 70s of video games the charm of the character was always so apparent and important there's no way nintendo would have been able to save video games if they didn't have very charming inspiring uh you know cutesy characters that a lot of people identify immediately nowadays if i show you if i showed you any character from concord i'm willing to bet you would be like eh. Uh, this doesn't give me any feeling. And that's what triple A developers seem to be missing in this space. And it's Guard it. Guardians of the Galaxy themed fucking hero shooter. Like, Overwatch isn't as popular as it used to be. Guardians of the Galaxy's cultural relevance is kind of like they did their third movie. It's done. Like it's diminishing at best. That's the best compliment I can give. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it, Guardians of the Galaxy are fun. Don't get me wrong; their movies hold up to this day. But let's be real; they're not like you know, like fucking um, his name um, which fucking what's the homophobic Chris's name? Uh, Chris Pratt. I, Chris Pratt. Okay. Uh, there you go. Uh, Chris Pratt, uh, he, uh, yeah, he, like, like, if Chris Pratt dresses up as Star-Lord, like, people aren't gonna be like, oh my god! <laughs> but, you know, I don't know, man, it's just, it just, it feels unfortunate, in a way. 
Like, it, I just, I, I think, I, 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 and what bums me out is that nobody who probably made the decision to make this fucking shooter is going to get punished for it. It's going to be all the developers that worked on it, and they're going to lose their goddamn jobs. Yep. More layoffs, earning calls, uh, investor calls about how earnings weren't as good as the last quarter, whatever bullshit it is. So, uh, it's just the same old stuff all over again. When will they learn? When will they learn? <laughs> it's here's the thing. The problem is, is, is that it's kind of the problem that's wrong with most companies nowadays. The people that run country companies and make <laughs> and make the decisions are MBAs. They're MBAs. Boeing was one of the most prolific, trusted, and reputable companies to work for in the United States and had and, and, and was synonymous with quality and safety and, and good engineering. And then they did a merger with a, a competitor so they could get into the commercial airline space. And because the people that were at Boeing were former engineers, so they were like very like taciturn, a matter of fact, about making sure that things get done properly. And the people from the other place were MBAs, and therefore they were sharks. The people from the other place ended up having a higher con concentration of people in management at Boeing from the other company. And they started doing shit like increasing quotas, uh, 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 putting pressure on, on returns, fighting the unions like finding if, standards uh, all this right so it's like when when you, you when you have blizzard was best when the people in charge of making the decisions at blizzard were developers now there was still a ton of toxic bullshit going on at blizzard at the time that is inexcusable sexual harassment notwithstanding but after, like there was a measurable decline in Blizzard's capa like, capacity once Activision took over, and you want to know why Activision was able to buy Blizzard? It's because the people at Blizzard needed Activision's call, like needed wanted to make Overwatch for console, and they did not have the expertise. They were a PC company, and this is a reminder that this was during a period of time when PC gaming was on it was on it was on a decades long decline. Nobody wanted to make games for PC. Nobody prioritized making games for PC. PC ports, like, are, are okay be, now. They used to be they, ass. I mean, historically terrible. Historically. If they, if, they <laughs> if they were made at all. Yep. So, functionally, at the end of the day, like, ultimately, ultimately, you know, Blizzard... Not like this. The the work environment got worse under Activision, and for what did they do this to be able to make Overwatch and get it to as many people as they could? And it wasn't even worth it for that in the end. Why? Because after a couple years, they just didn't fucking maintain Overwatch anymore. They were focused completely on Overwatch Two, and the game fucking died. Then they brought back out Overwatch 2, and its numbers never and that recovered. Failed. It <laughs> never recovered. They did not maintain the community. You know, when you have a, a game that is purely multiplayer like that, you have to do something to resemble, like, a drip of content. That's why, you know, for years, there would be a new Call of Duty every year. Because they would stop patching the fucking game, you know, eventually, and then everybody would just move on over. To the next yeah. one, because that's where all the new content went. That's where all the new people were. There's a, like now that you know, you know. So ultimately, at the end of the day, like, you know, like Overwatch was huge. Everybody I knew played it. Everybody fucking played it, and now nobody one I know does. I, I don't know yeah. a single human being that unironically plays Overwatch. Well, I think that's also the current problem with these online-only video games. Like, it's so many aspects that if you're not in it for... If you're not in it as a play, paid player, nine times out of ten, you're not getting a lot of the content. And... I think... I, I, th I think that if you are a... If you are playing a game with microtransactions, I believe that... 
if you pay the full price of uh, like the, the amount of money for a full price game if you are a free player and you have a free to play experience you enjoy it that's great if you pay i think if you like if you do end up i think that microtransactions and all that shit and like paying like pay to win shit like there i think it could like if you if it's a free to play game and you pay money you should have a an increased experience for the duration that you play that game based off of the amount of money you played. If you pay ten dollars, you're paying like you're having the enjoyment as if you played for like a ten for like ten dollars for any game. If you paid sixty dollars, you should not have to pay any more than that sixty dollars for as long as you are playing that free to play game to enjoy yourself. Like that like I think that if you are if you are doing a free to play game that it sustains itself on microtransactions fine i don't have a problem with that but if you have to pay like hundreds of dollars a month to be able to enjoy the game that is just exploitatory hell i would i would wouldn't even be a have a problem with it if like the, the game expected you to spend an average of 15 dollars a month to be able well, to have that elevated say, experience it's weak, real quick. It's, there are steam subs and shit too I was going to say, real quick, how do you feel about, not necessarily like Game Pass and things like that, not that, but uh, like Stellaris is a perfect example of this. They have a subscription service, it, you could look it up on Steam right now under the Stellaris page, that is, if you pay, I think it's 15 to 20 bucks a month, you get all of the DLC, all access to the DLC. Every month you uh, I already paid for it, something like that. I pay, I pay fifteen dollars a month for ESO Plus, yeah, Elder Scrolls exactly. Online Plus. Elder Scrolls Online is a game, is an MMO that you can pay for once. You can buy the new chapter when it comes out every year for for like forty eight dollars to upgrade, whatever. Fine, like you're paying for an entire game anyways with that new chapter coming out. Who cares? But you pay twenty dollars for Elder Scrolls Online. You get a, a, a chunk of of like of, of content over the last decade to play more than you would probably need. Like if you if you're just gonna you can play that you can. Download, spend twenty dollars on Elder Scrolls Online, and there's a more enough content in that twenty dollars that you, if you just treated Elder Scrolls Online like a fucking RPG, like a Guild Wars one where there's people running around and shit, but you're just going through the story, interacting with characters, fighting things, collecting things, getting loot and leveling up, and you just wanted to fucking quit once you got to like level fifty or like level lower or or like to the Torbex or to like to like the CP standard of like one sixty. Be my fucking guest. Be my guest. Like, like I, I, it's, it, 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 it Elder Scrolls Online is one of those games that is very much a case of, it is a good game on its own merits, and it's also an MMO. And I choose to pay monthly or yearly. I paid yearly before I had no money, so I still paid up on it. Uh, I get a, a bag which stores all my crafting materials, so I don't have to micromanage my storage for them. I have, you know, 10% experience gain, 10% gold gain, um, a couple of other perks, like I can, in, like the amount of things I can, like, decorate with my house is, in, is increased, is, is, is multiplied by two, um, you know, shit, like, like I get, I get, like, special deals and stuff from the, from, like, the in play to win store, and when you pay for your monthly membership, you get, like the exact like the, the amount of money you would normally get for in in crowns like the premium currency if you spend fifteen dollars on crowns you get like that with your membership plus some more you know it's, I I have no problem like morally doing that and while you are subscribed to that you get all of the non chapter DLC all the dungeons that are new all of the new content that's new as for access because most of that content costs about 10 20 dollars a piece now so real quick i yeah. i just this is just what i want to understand about this process though let's say you have dlc content and then your subscription lapses what happens to that stuff in your inventory does it get Nothing. taken it, that, be very, see, it, that's it, how it should be because because here's the thing the gear that you can get from those dlc zones you can just buy in the auction house or somebody can give to you. The gear that you get itself is not what you're paying for. It is being able to access the area that it's in, the quests that are in that area and all the content that they're within, and maybe some of one of the new features that they added, for example. 
Um, if you, uh, in, uh, actually, now that I think about it, it, like, anything that you need ESO Plus to access is, like, doesn't have any new features that, mm -hmm. that are tied off. The only time features that are tied off come with the, they add new features with, with the chapters. See, that, that would be the only fear that I have going forward. With yeah, well, wait, well, here's the thing. You can't, you can't, you can't do get the subscription. No, no, no. I'm not chapter. saying with, yeah. I'm not saying with ESO online. Uh, yeah. I, I'm saying more so with, like, if Bethesda, not not Bethesda, if Ubisoft, EA, yeah, Ubisoft would do that shit. Ubisoft. This is what I'm saying. If you pay for that every single month, what would happen to the content that you receive, and then it lapses in the you know uh, the subscription? I'm just scared. See, I would never do it with Stellaris because I'm only scared that if I start a campaign, I get really deep into it that has DLC elements and then I don't pay because something happens. Well, here's My a game that's a good not. example of that. Here's a game that's a great example of that. Wizard no, 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 I'm saying. Wizard 101. Wizard 101. Oh, that as well. Wizard 101 is coming to console. Oh, wow. Yeah. And so King's Isle needs to, and 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 I and I and, I, and like keep and everybody in the community is making a point of just like one, which is the first four worlds and some change, all need to be free. Makes sense. The, Makes all sense. of Wizard City, no. Wizard One Hundred One is not free. The free to play trial is yeah. still exactly what it was a decade and a half ago. <laughs> You that's, play that bitch for 30 minutes and you hit a fucking paywall. That's insane. How much is it? Eight bucks a month. I mean, that's not horrible, but Jesus Christ. More than RuneScape, less than WoW. True, 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 true. And don't get me wrong. Wizard 101 is fun. I love it. I love the art direction. I love the card game aspect. It's all great. Here's my thing. Like, we're all grown adults. Everybody that plays that game is grown. Everyone that plays that game is a grown ass man or woman. Probably. We're all Maybe. grown. Like nobody that is under the nobody like 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 they either need to like. Maybe some like really niche alternative traditional kids are like still playing with that and like Tamagotchis, but yeah, there there's really no kids on it. <laughs> no, and like so it's like if you want to. I am. Here's the thing: if they're bringing it to console, mm. they need to do the following things. Act one, i.e., the beginning of the game, all the beginning areas of the game, Krakatopia, Mushu, Dragon Spire, Marley Bow. Wait, Wizard. So all of Wizard City, the starting area, Mushu, Dragon Spire, Krakatopia, Marley Bow. Those five worlds. All free. All the content that is on those worlds, all free. Second, they need to make they need to um, also make sure that they're they're adding. Um, you need that you. They also need to uh, um, add uh, voice chat. That would make sense. It's so easy in console. Yeah, it's like. Like, cause but it's I, like, I I do want to return just really quick to the original point. Yeah, I just want to say, no, 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 no worries. Uh, I just also want to say, like, I hear the people who would say, like, hey, what about my di digital ownership? I can't have physical ownership now. I can't even have it with my DLC. And I'm not necessarily saying that they should take away the option for you to own the DLC or the extra content as well. That should always be an option. I'm just saying with the constant, uh, like, ooh, just because it's a game I play, Warframe is a perfect example. The constant free updates always come with paid stuff that you could eventually grind and get and stuff like that. And that's all I'm saying. Like, it is there. It is a time-consuming process. I understand why sometimes you want to cut down on that time. But also, you should be able to pay for a certain subscription every month that just 10 to $20 flat and you get everything in the game all access. So, boom. You know? Yeah, it's but like you know, the, I think ultimately, the only way you're going to be able to like 
truly own the things that you want to buy is, is that you could be also like pirating simultaneously. Yeah, because then you, because the argument is you don't have genuine ownership until you could actually distort and uh, manipulate it any way you want, like a piece exactly. of technology. Exactly. Uh, exactly. I understand it. Uh, I, I get just, it. Just, just, just so, like, just so long as you cannot resell that, like you know. But even then, I think you should be able to. Like, but you can't sell. You can only sell like one. Like, I think, like you can You can only just. You can't yeah, distribute I don't it for free. I, I don't necessarily agree. I agree with distributing for free depending on who it is. But I think with certain, I, it shouldn't be like a everything that is released gets distributed for free regardless. That's not what so I was saying. That's not what I was saying. No, no, no. If you, if you uh, buy I'll a say, thing, if you buy a MacGuffin and you manipulate that MacGuffin, you should be able to sell that MacGuffin and get your money back if you want. But you can only sell it once. You can't like sell yeah, multiple. Yeah. Like, like that's, you know. Oh, uh, so uh, what I'm saying is I agree with you. Because, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you shouldn't be able to replicate it infinitely and then profit off of that. That's what I'm saying. If yeah. you give it away for free, then who am I to make a moral argument against it? Do what you want. But if you right. are making, forcing people to pay for it and you're replicating it indefinitely, then you're just counterfeiting money at that point. That's how yeah. I see it. Yeah. Yo, on a completely different topic, you want to see some fuck shit? And, I, and sure. I'll, I'll, I'll have to, I might have to explain to you why it's fuck shit, but I want to share this with you. Let's see. What is it? Calling all developers. This is from Twitter developer. Like the Twitter developer. Oh, God. Innovate with our real time and historical data on the X API. Get started with Pro instantly. And I say, build whatever's next with our API. And okay. When you click it. It takes you to fucking like. Filtered stream API, right? Three. How much is that a month? Is that five thousand dollars a month? Are they out of their minds? No, I know about this it, a little bit. It this used. Is... It used to be free, and I and I commented on this bitch. Did you revert the insane rate limit costs? Evidently not, because they're Please. smoking crack. Yeah, like uh, just. Let me try and explain. Basic is, basic is 100%, $100 a hundred percent, a hundred dollars a month. Fuck me, very dude. quickly. Let me try and explain it, and then you'll come in and actually explain it right. Go so, long it. story short, this is how. And also, stop me where I'm wrong if I start to like completely veer off. But mm -hmm. this is how like news agencies and weather reports and things like that can update real time in x slash twitter uh including like weather updates especially harmful weather uh traffic updates regarding accidents and shit like that hospitals god forbid there's an emergency and they need to really update people on a live scale even news agencies and shit like that right uh so go ahead you explain it smart now <laughs> okay so i'll so okay so let's take this shall we so you should go You're, nothing no, nothing you said was incorrect <laughs> but uh, well nothing you said was incorrect but i do want to extrapolate a tiny bit no please please i was just gonna say i thought you were gonna pull up microsoft paint and <laughs> explain it like pirate i was gonna be like okay you know what uh, you know what you know what honestly you you say that but you know what fine excaladr excaladr okay fine i'll do it I'll do it that way. Fine. So here's it. So let's. Uh, where's the fucking paint thing? Okay. Cool. So the entire. So the entire internet. You know the the World Wide Web. You know I'm trying to my best to draw a bad globe here. Okay. Is is basically when you type in like Google.com. That is not that is just that is like putting in your address like like if when you when when you are like think of it like to, a gps navigation system right yeah so yeah so it's like if you're you are located somewhere there are things there is a you live in a house this your house is, is located somewhere right that's your ip 
not even your IP. That it could be your IP. It could be the data that makes up a website. It could be the uh the 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 the, the it could be the endpoint that like bring that like serves you data. Like this is where the stuff is. The this Google.com is just the address. This address could like the name like 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 fucking just to fucking use like the address of like an old Walgreens I used to go to. Two A Trolley Square, Wilmington, Delaware, one nine eight zero one two one eight zero two one six one eight zero zero six whatever whatever I don't care. Point is, is is that that the, the all of that could be anything. Anything could be at that Walgreens. It could be a fucking stop and shop. It could be a fucking Jake Shack. It could be whatever. But it's but but that is what is that address and also that address could like be anywhere that address could be anywhere anything like that address just in a, in a, in a for a different reason could be like somewhere across the country it's just words that point you to this location okay. when you are when you open up a website it, it it hits the server. It, it hits the location on the internet where certain things are hosted, and that is what you're seeing on the screen. There is a reason why there is one nonprofit that manages all of this because you have to have one central entity take care of this. When you buy, when I buy a domain through GoDaddy, like I'm there, I, I'm paying I can fees. Um, which is the nonprofit that manages shit, this shit worldwide. So all of these, so the thing is, is here is this, right? This URL is not a great way of getting data because when you hit this URL, just the normal google.com, you get everything needed to like be able to use it. So what I as a developer will do, and I will and I, and I will actually, just to show an example, I'll pull up some of my code and I'll show you. This is the High Media Hub website in code form. I built this, I, this, I, I built this all myself. All of this is like of my creation. And so I'm going to pull up, uh, let's just as an example, app directory, let's go to cookbook. Not, the cookbook's not a good one. Um, Let's go to, let's look at the, Hall of Shame. Hall of Shame, this is the place where I post up all of the motherfuckers that are soliciting during my Twitch streams. There's a text view. They got a part view. They got a text view. Say lovey. So for this, um, I go to all of this, that, this stuff you see here is pulled from this list, the shame list. This is what, you know, when, when data is, when you say or searching on Google, you know, you do, you type into Google, you know, uh, cat videos or fart buckle. Okay. And like, you get a bunch of stuff, like all of these things, when, what is actually sent, what is, you have all the UI stuff that's on your thing, but what's actually sent to you is a, that is actually pulled from the request is just a bunch of data that like comes in like a JSON like this. You don't see it, you don't see this JSON, you don't access to it, but that is what the server kind of calls. It kind of takes that data and packages like it like packages it up and sends it out in this format. I also like to think of it as uh, people who sketch uh, and how they erase all the sketch lines and you only have the final product. This is all the sketch line, pretty much. Uh, kind of. Um, you just don't get rid of it. It just comes together. Right. So, like, the data that's sent to you, like, could be co co could come this way. Usually, it's in a way where, where like, the data is sent directly through the, through code. But I'm just talking about how a website is built. Like, yeah, this yeah. is all the, the sketch, and then the website is this the is, final picture. Yeah. Well, no. So what's well, no, no. So when you hit a URL, what's actually sent to you is this. Or um, let me. Oh, oh, um, that's not the correct thing. Uh, what's actually sent to you when you call a website is the HTML file. 
the HTML, the CSS, and the JavaScript file. And then this is what is displayed. Mm. So, so sometimes the date, like, but, but if you, but, but like, if you want to display data dynamically on a website, you need to, you can't necessarily, you can't just have them constantly refresh and pull data, like a new HTML every single time that's inefficient. So what you do is you have use JavaScript to automatically pull it from a link, an endpoint like this. So this HTTPS raw GitHub or user content, my name, and then like a link to the shameless, which is again, this thing that was uh, right here. And it pulls this and then it, and it it pulls this from the server and displays it. So like the background, the, the picture, the, the buttons, the, the titles, the color of the thing, everything, like the color of everything, that is all, like even, even how these are all formatted are all done in the initial HTML that you get pulled from the server. Then when it loads up, it simultaneously pulls data from this file adding it to here. Why did I go over all of this to explain how a, a website dynamically updates itself? And, if, and I explained this very poorly. I, I apologize. That is because on, that is because APIs, these, the thing that Twitter is talking about here are an application programming interface is the backbone of not just the internet, but software development in general. See, when you're building an application, you can send data like and manipulate that data however you want within that application. But every single you know application in the world kind of processes data a little differently. There's different standards, there's different ways the, the variables are named differently, methods are named differently, nothing is the same, and there's no way you can guarantee that everything is the same. So what do you do? You reduce what the data looks like down to its simplest form. And that's and, and, and you send it in a packet called a JSON file. JSON file. And so what'll happen is, is that you, a program will send out this JSON file. Another application will take it, take the information within it, format it, it like format it in such a way that it's able to, that their program is able to read it, and then take that data from somewhere else and display it or use it for whatever they want. When I was working at JP Morgan Chase, we would have tons of data. There was data that we would get packaged to us internally that we should not, that is not needed or not recommended to be displayed in our program. So one of the things we would do is our intake you know, methods would cut out, say, I want, say, I just want the person's name. I don't want their, their date banned. I don't want their reason for a ban. I just want the ID and the name. I would just take data. I would, I would set a filter that would basically get rid of this. And so then that data does not interface with the rest of the thing, but everything moves smoothly forward regardless. Here's the thing you will have to understand. This is not a one-time thing. When you are just testing these alone, you are hitting these end the where you get the 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 locations where you get this data from or endpoints. A lot of times, APIs will have things called endpoints, which are basically this up here. Like this is an endpoint. If you type this, you, if you typed this URL, any of you wanted to type this URL in and take and get access to this data and use it for whatever you want. You could, you, if you had a program tomorrow and you wanted to, you know, make a, a program that said all the people Evan banned because he was a whiny little bitch and have that be this and, and display that using my data, you could. Some APIs like, uh, like, you know, some APIs can have like restrictions and a whitelist preventing only making sure certain people need them, whatever. But by and large, you know, anybody can grab this if they want it. Now, here's the problem. A lot of programs, especially if that are all hitting the same endpoint, will hit it a lot. 
their basic thing where you have to pay a hundred dollars a month for three to post three thousand things per month per months. And so when I, it says read and write, these mean different different things. Reading something means I am hitting the endpoint and just viewing the data that was pulled. Writing is I am adding something to the to the to 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 the server, creating something new. So, uh, let me see if I can find the. Let me see if I can find uh, their. Uh, yeah, they're free. Here's how bullshit it is. You are rate limited. Uh, rate limited, meaning you are not able to. You are limited or not able to do certain things with 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 the code. You are limited to posting 150 posts per month. This is, this, by the way, that posting limit is um, both read and write. When you read something, write something, update something, anything, you can only interact with the server 1,500 times in a month before you can know your app just doesn't work anymore as a free user. That is insane. You will go through at least six to 800 interactions with the server just fucking testing, just hitting Postman. Postman being a application that developers use to test whether or not endpoints work in a quick and dynamic fashion. What this, the reason why, one of the biggest reasons why Twitter is no longer useful and no longer pop or popular was because Elon Musk took their API, which originally was one of, was one of the last freely open and developer friendly APIs that you could just do whatever the fuck you wanted with Mo not completely but mostly and he put it behind a $5000 pay a month paywall unless you are building like some pedantic little bullshit that you are never going to share with the world you are you know you're getting the 5000 because only 3,000, like, posts per month at the user level is insane. Being only able to read 10,000? Like, if you are actively developing an app that you are planning on people using, that's not enough. You're constantly going to be developing. And if people are using the app, they're going to be getting hitting that limit as well. I apologize if your eyes have started glazing over with my explanation. I did not think this was the Twitter news you were going to talk about. I did hear about it. Uh, my ba my background and information did not help to understand past like the five minute point of what you were talking about. I tried though. I'm I sorry. Tried. Yeah, there's no, so all good. There's all good. So I understand. But yeah. the Twitter news I thought you were going to bring up is the fact that Diddy was an original uh, helper of Elon Musk getting and acquiring fucking X. <laughs> <laughs> everybody, or just real quick, everybody on X is officially part of the Diddy party, and they didn't even know. <laughs> Yeah, honest, honest to God, like that's probably like the least offensive thing like Diddy has done recently. Like, well, everybody was saying that's why X is so fucking freaky. <laughs> nah, Elon Musk knows he can't ban porn. No, literally. But every everybody, it's, it's like all the people that bitch about porn on Twitter are the same ones that consume porn. On Twitter. So just maybe limit this to like a two to three minute response uh does yeah. any of that influence or have an impact on customer uh, not customer but like interactions with people who are viewing the content uh uh what do you mean 
uh, like, does it limit the possibility of interactions of, at all, or it just limits the amount that you're able to post to your actual, like, it, it, feed? It limits reading and writing. So reading meaning, like, say I wanted to build, like, my own personal version of, like, user, like, a version of Twitter that basically filters out, you know, that automatically filters out through the, like, the, like, bullshit from the algorithm. Say I wanted to make, like, a feed where I'm, like, Anyone, like, anyone with, like, this kind of, with, like, this kind of, like... No spam content, like, no... Any, 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 any anything, yeah. or, or, or anything, like, like, if they have, like, a, like, a right wing wing symbol in their, in their, in their bio... Okay. So like, you if can they, specify it, gotcha. Yeah, say I wanted to do that, and there have been people that have done that, and I just wanted it for personal use, personal mm. use, no more than that. Because I am just, I'm, like, getting my stuff down from my feed... I would hit that in like a day or two, maybe. And that's if I'm using it like intermittently. Like, because the thing is, is that every time you call the server for whatever reason, and here's the thing, when you're calling things to read, that's usually much more frequent and much more like, you know, than, than a write. A write is like me posting something or, 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 or like, or like there's a the terminology. There's like, there's read, write, uh, and there's read, uh, um, write, and then there's read and write is like two things. Write, I think, might also contribute, like, changing things. Like, if you have something like like a, a script to automatically change your, you know, your profile picture to, like, something based on a holiday or whatever, like, that also counts. But, like, also yeah. just getting data from the server, like, all every, every comment... Every reply all counts. My information with read and write is from fucking disks. So yeah, you're, I'm you're, outdated. You're, 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 you're good. <laughs> it, it just the last thing I'll say on it before you, you know we you, we move on to something else or whatever is ultimately like read and write can be honestly classified into four separate things. Um, um, a get, post, put, delete. Okay. Get is just read. Get is just reading. Uh, post, put, and delete. You know, delete is what it sounds like. Post is basically adding something, and put is editing something and adding something. So like, get is get. So get is read, and those other three are like when they say write, it's those it's it's those three put together. Got it. Okay. That's 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 that. Um, do you want to know? That, so uh, I know you couldn't give a rat's ass about Yu Gi Oh. Well, you want to uh, hear yes. something? Zane Malik won, right? He won. No, 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 he was the shadow duelist. He was like supposed to be like the big bad person you're supposed to fight at the end of like a, a master duel tournament they held. Oh, okay, he was like the final boss. That's funny. I'm like. I'm, I, I think that people are like overly mad about it. I know that there are a lot of people with former oh, One Direction or girlfriends who, who, who like, who like loves Zayn Malik. Who I'm like, you know, you could use this as an opportunity to try and get your girlfriend into Yu-Gi-Oh. Maybe have her play Zayn Malik's deck and like learn it together. Use that as a fucking onboarding, you uncreative fucks. Like, I'm just, like, I saw all these people mad. Don't get me wrong. It was, the premise of it was stupid as shit. Just, they should have taken the money that they've been getting and, and, and make, invested it in making the app better. But, like, hey, I'm, and listen, I know Meadow liked One Direction in the past. Like, let me fucking use that as an excuse to get her ass on board with it. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, shit. That's what people do. I will just say, though, it seems akin and maybe this is a fucked up opinion, but this is a genuine position that I have. And say what you want about it in the comments, I don't really care. But it seems like anybody who is a non, uh, you know, uh, one-to-one -one representation of what uh, the anime or game culture is about. Like, uh, what I'm saying is pretty much like black uh, anime content cosplay creators that constantly upload different videos and whatever will always get like hateful comments and I think that's just like the anime commenters 
are so part of a toxic world that that is to be expected. Not that that is excused, but I, I do kind of buy into that argument. Not that I'm a hate poster at all. I despise people who do it. But I do think that it's like a rite of passage. It's like walking the coals of actually becoming a uh, loved and iconic uh, cosplayer. Because, I mean, like, Megan the Stallion is a perfect example of this. People always talk shit on her, but at the very least, she is doing an accurate representation nine times out of ten of either the anime, video game series, whatever content that she is trying to represent. And I just think that without, without those comments, I don't think that you should... I don't think that you are necessarily respected in the eyes of other people or part of the community i don't know it's weird fucked up but i'm starting to understand that as part of, of the internet anime culture <laughs> yeah i don't know i'm just kind of over anime at this point japan kind of creeps me out i get that uh it depends which ones i mean uh it's, some of these are getting out of hand, like uh, I've been reincarnated as a fridge, that's a genuine anime. There's another anime that's like, I secretly think- <laughs> That's like a shitpost! That sounds no, like a shitpost! I swear to God, look, you're look it up fuck, You are fucking <laughs> lying. You are fucking lying. I was reincarnated as a fridge. No, as a slime, I'm sorry. As a oh. I actually have read that one. It's actually not that bad. It's one of the better isekais. It's not dog shit. But look, no, no, no. I, I'm not wrong. Look up vending machine anime. I know there is one. I'm not fucking around. Fucking God, it's real. What did I tell you? <laughs> what did I tell you? Touch grass. Can we get an original fucking thought for 10 seconds? I think. I, I think. told you. It looks like a fridge. It looks like a fridge. You can't tell me that isn't a fridge. I know it says vending machine, but that's a fridge. And is the blonde chick gonna fuck the vending machine? Oh, uh, yeah, I definitely agree. So that anime is getting out of hand. I thought the fucking smartphone one was like already self and fucking dodging. <laughs> uh, Are you? Oh! <laughs> I think we need to drop the third bomb. <laughs> I think we need to drop the third bomb. Like, I... I... Oh, not them romancing with the vending machines. I hate it. I hate it. I hate that entire... Ugh. Ah. Wow. I think after all this, I need to go lay down. <laughs> I, oh. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for watching the rundown. This has been our 24th episode. Brian has dealt all of us psychic damage. And y'all and you guys are more than welcome to go into our Discord, at him at bman1222, and bully him in general. And I encourage you to do so. And I will, and I will instruct my mods to not stop you from doing so. Confusion was super effective. <laughs> Follow Brian below at his Instagram at uh, Brian uh, Noda two underscore Brian, or don't block him on Instagram instead. Maybe. Um, I just want to clarify one thing. I don't watch that. I just have seen it on. And Crunchy you Girl. made the active, <laughs> deliberate choice. To tell me it existed. I was gonna bring. I was gonna bring up like, hey, did you see the new space marine footage? And now you don't. We don't get to talk about that. You need to have punishment. Fuck it's you. okay. 
I, I have a countdown for Space Marine. It's cool. I don't need to see any video. I'll be experiencing it. It's all good. <laughs> but yeah, I can't believe that's a real anime. I would not fucking, watch fucking, that. You know what? The only, the, the only, one of the only isekai animes that's probably worth watching is the original isekai anime, ReZero. Like, Makes sense. Because it's the original, it has to like give real explanations as to why this shit is happening. And it makes sense within context of the world. And like, yeah, Izakai is a uh, very weird, weird anime uh, choice if they don't explain the world correctly. <laughs> there's one type of Isekai thing I like now, and that is literally just people getting to another world and like having a cozy life. And that's yep. it. That's it. Mm. Just chilling, having a good time. But on that note, ladies and gentlemen, thank you all so much for watching, and I will. we will see you guys next week. Have a Love good you guys. See ya. Hey, thanks for watching. If you want to you want to talk to me outside of this video, outside of live streams, or just be a, join the community and be a part of it, you can do so at hibmedia.gg slash Discord. Discord link's there. We'd love to have you. And given the financial situation of the economy right now, I know this is a tall ask, but if you have the scratch to, to spare, please consider donating and becoming a supporter at hibmedia.gg slash tip. All of our perks are serviced through our Discord channel, including early access videos, exclusive videos, and more. Your generosity is a blessing, and a dollar a month is a boon to my bank account. Thank you so very much for watching. I appreciate you, and have a great day.